Well, greetings and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. And joining me on screen, you can see our facilitator, Scott Laundrie, who I'll introduce here in a moment. Uh, before I do hand things over to Scott, just a, a quick note about today's session. Because of the short duration of our session today, we're not gonna field questions. If you do have any though, feel free to just email me directly. I'd be happy to facilitate any specific questions you might have. And you can reach me at Dwayne, that's D-W-A-Y-N-E. So Dwayne at leanfrontiers.com. Well, let me jump right in and introduce uh, today's facilitator, Scott Laundry. Scott is a senior project manager and a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt for TDO, which is a central New York uh, MEP. Scott's also gained a reputation as a skilled kata practitioner and coach, uh, which is part of what brings us to the uh, subject of today's webinar. Scott, I know you've had some experience with a former simulation that was used during the, uh, the NUMI joint venture between Toyota and GM. And so we asked you to come on here and maybe just share some thoughts about not only Toyota Kata in general, but specifically that simulator. And so I'm looking forward to just hearing some of your insights from your, your experience on that, that simulator. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you and let you run with it. Okay, thanks, Dwayne. And I'm excited to share some of those insights. Um, what I'd like to do is first start out with an understanding of what is skill point for Toyota Kata understand some of the elements of what, what makes up skill point. And then we can have some reflection on the learnings that I've had um, from my experiences at skill point. So really, this almost sounds like a joke, but what do you get when you cross a world-class simulation with a proven training format and three organizations with a ton of experience in their respective areas and the answer to that is skill point that's really what it is it's these three things that you see on the screen we've got a world-class simulation and uh, that world-class simulation um, is probably about the closest thing you'll get to working at a facility that's operating under, under the toyota production system uh, it really is uh, at that level um, and then when you look at the proven training format, we've got um, the TWI format, uh, which is both used for the skill point for Kata and also the skill point for job instruction uh, offerings. And those are um, leveraging a proven format. And if you really think about it, that's a format for rapid understanding of pattern-based skills. And those are skills that you practice to develop a capability. The TWI methods are really pattern-based skills that you practice. And so that, that's the format uh, for uh, the instruction part of skill point. And then the third one is experience. And really we're talking about experience of three organizations. We've got a Center for Employee Development. That's Steve, he's got 20 years managing in a Toyota facility. You got experienced and trained coaches that go along with that. You get Lean Frontiers, premier organization for coordinating learning events like this and facilitating those with on staff a really deep understanding of Lean and Toyota Kata and TWI on their staff as well. And then the TWI Institute um, providing um, instructors in, in leading and the teaching of the 10 hour format. Um, and people who practice kata and lean in general. So we'll get to lessons learned. When we get there, we'll come back and talk about the synergy aspect of the, of the learning experience and how these things combine, in my opinion. So world-class simulation, proven format, and then experience moving forward. So on your, on your screen, you'll see a, a picture of the simulator. Um, now I'm not, easily impressed by things. But this Lean Environment Simulator, or LES, really was impressive the first time I saw it and uh, when I got to experience it even more so. Uh, so in this case, less is more. The Lean Environment Simulator 
um, is made available through the Center for Employee Development. They acquired it um, when it became available. As Dwayne mentioned, it's it's out of the NUMI facility or New United Motor Manufacturing in, in plant in Fremont, California, that was a joint venture between Toyota and GM. And what it is, it's a world-class simulation of a world-class production system. That's the best way that I can describe it. Um, there are other uh, simulated work environments like this in use today, but this is one of a few, if not the only one, that's made available to the public uh, for training uh, like this. Um, and Duane actually uh, from Lean Frontiers wrote, wrote a great article on these simulated work environments. If you get a chance, look that up. It's a good read. Um, in this simulator, if you look at it, you can see there are, there are what they call cabs. These are simulated wooden truck bodies. Um, basically what you're doing is you're assembling and disassembling things onto those truck bodies, uh, wooden bumpers, wooden taillights, steering wheels, uh, fuel doors, um, those type of uh, elements. Um, and it's got powered conveyors. So two sides of that uh, configuration that you see there are powered conveyors where the cabs are pulled along at a slow pace, just like they would be in a real automotive factory. The ends are non-powered sections and the, uh, the cabs get moved down by the disassembly people in those sections. So they turn the corner and travel. Um, so it's a complete powered conveyor system. Um, it's got key performance indicators for production, quality, cost, and safety as well as part of the simulation. Um, so it's really comprehensive. Um, here are just some pictures of things that you would, would experience in the, the Lean Enterprise Simulator. First of all, it's real work with real tools. So you can see there's a, a woman um, tightening nuts on with a with a drill um, after as assembling the uh, looks like a tail light on a cab. Um, to the right of that, you can see uh, material flow racks with Kanban bins with Kanban cards on them, um, and really dense uh, flow rack storage at point of use. So that's something that uh, you know is very realistic as well. Here's some other elements. Every station has their standard work in a, a station to convey all the important information. On the right-hand side, you've got K cards or Kamichi buy cards. These are cards that are filled out by each operator um, prior to starting a production run. Uh, they have the standard work that they do in preparation. You've got um, operator logs, uh, a safety man in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, in the middle bottom there, you've got what is a standard uh, process sheet uh, for what the standard process is and times and things. And then you've got job instruction breakdown, a binder below that that you can't quite see. Up and to the right, um, this is a good picture of how, how realistic this environment is. The flow racks for the material even have mirrors over the top of them so that you can monitor the um, material content in the bins themselves, just like you would when you had really dense flow rack in a tight space on a production uh, production line. So it really is very, very uh, realistic and you get that feel of minimized movement, point of view storage, Kanban, and a lot of those type of things in the LES. Um, some other elements that, that I thought were kind of cool uh, for this simulation that made it very realistic and maybe even beyond what many companies have, is uh, you can see on the, uh, in the picture, they're looking at stack charts. These are little magnets that have all the elements of standard work stacked up on top of each other. And the height of them reflects the amount of uh, time that it takes. So these, these people are understanding the current condition uh, in terms of kata. So they understand what each each operator is doing on the line and what the what the time stack up to be. And they can also use this to um, move and explore different target conditions that they might want to operate on, different operating patterns using those, uh, those stack charts on the magnets. Um, so that's, again, something that's a, a very, very um, nice addition to any simulation, makes it very realistic to understand the standard work. The Andon system 
Um, if you're not familiar with the Andon, it's a system by which an operator can signal a team lead that there's a problem. In this case, it's a, a white cord. The woman has her hand on the, the white cord there. Um, when that white cord is pulled, it plays a musical song, one of four songs for the four possible teams that are on the simulator at any given time. So the team lead notes that their, their team has a problem and that, that cord is pulled. The conveyor will move to the next stop point and then pause until the end on is, is reinitiated and re-released. Um, and uh, if you've never worked under an and on system, um, to have a team lead respond to a production problem that you might have in say 30 seconds is something that just as often isn't there um, in many environments. Um, right over the woman's uh, hand, you can see in the background, there's a Kanban or there's an and on board and that will light up with the station number of the, uh, of the station um, that has pulled the Andon cord. And then there are those red e-stop cords if you need to immediately stop the system and whenever you pull one of those Andon cords, um, or when you were to pull the e-stop cord, that's considered a safety incident and recorded as such in the simulation. Um, uh, so going a little bit beyond the simulator, talking a little bit about the 10-hour format. If you're not familiar with the TWI 10-hour formats, it's a combination of a classroom with participant demonstrations and practice. And really, if you think about it, kata, Toyota kata is something that you learn by practicing with feedback. And as an experienced TWI instructor, that's what it sounds like happens in a TWI 10 hour class, right? You learn by practicing something with feedback. And uh, the TWI format is five two hour sessions that interleave content with participant demonstrations or practice. So each person gets the opportunity to practice in, in skill point kata, gets to practice being both a learner and a coach. So you get to practice both. And in the learner, you're actually practicing doing the improvement kata. So the four, four steps of the improvement kata from understand the current direct or understand the direction, get the current condition, establish the next next pair condition, and then experiment. So you get to practice the improvement kata, and then you get practice in coaching uh, the learners as well. Um, and those will happen before and after rounds of actual experimentation on the simulator. Uh, so it's very, very realistic and kind of cool and integrates with the 10 hour format very nicely because that uh, combination of, of instruction with demonstration has always been part of the 10 hour format. And that's been around for 75 years and, and is a very proven format. And you can see Oscar who uh, developed the uh, uh, the 10 hour version of Kata or the TWI Institute is, is leading that class. Um, another thing about the 10 hour format is people would be very familiar with the TWI pocket cards, which are little references for essentially practicing the pattern reminders as you're practicing the methods. And uh, that's really practicing a pattern. So it's always been part of the TWI format. And the fact that the uh, the Kata, Toyota Kata, uses a coaching question card uh, when you're practicing Kata. Just it's a, a complete natural fit with a 10-hour format. Um, there's, there wasn't a big leap there to adapt it. Uh, a little bit more about experience. When we talk about the experience, um, this picture a little hard to see, but Steve's up at the top of the picture, um, uh, and he's uh, owns the lean enterprise simulator, uh, lean environment simulator, sorry. And uh, uh, he's giving a, a little instruction here on lean and about the TPS. And he knows it because we worked in Toyota for 20 years as a, as a manager in Toyota facilities. I believe it was the Georgetown facility. So there's a lot of experience there and he translates that to his coaches or facilitators that work the lean enterprise simulator to make sure that all the important aspects of the uh, TPS and the Lean Enterprise Simulator are translated to them. So 
here we see Carl in the gray shirt at the top. He's um, kind of debriefing a team, getting the actual condition now and, and what happened during the experiments um, in between production rounds um, and recording that on the KPI board. So we've got, again, KPIs for production, quality, cost, safety, and uh, there's uh, charts for each round on the right-hand side. And Carol's, Carl's a very experienced, he's one of a lot of very experienced coaches, but has all the great demeanors of, of a coach that you'd expect in a TPS uh, type system. Um, also talking a little bit about experience, you know, I, I can't leave out Lean Frontiers. Um, they really have a lot of experience in managing these type of events and, and really make sure that the event goes off. And uh, I've even seen Lean Frontiers staff going out and, you know, pushing caps around the corners uh, when somebody had to unexpectedly leave. So um, they really do make sure that the event happens um, as smoothly as possible. Um, so let's get a little bit into the reflections here. And when, when we're practicing kata, the fourth step of experiment towards your target conditions, the coaching questions that we ask to get to reflection, the most important question there is, what did you learn? So I want to talk about that in terms of reflecting on my experiences um, at skill point, uh, what I took away um, from, from my experiences there. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a, a element that I learned from Tilo Swartz at the Kata Dojo at the most recent KataCon. And so I'm going to use this little phrase with respect to. So what did I learn with respect to practicing Kata specifically in a TPS environment, right? It's a Toyota production system, so there can't be much room for improvement, right? Well, what, I, what I've learned was that um, Practicing kata in that type of an environment just illustrates that, you know, practicing kata and continuous improvement is effective even in environments that already have many of the elements that you think would be in a lean organization. So no matter how lean you think you are, kata is probably effective for you, just like it's effective for Toyota. So that reinforced that for me. Um, that there was still always improvement in Kata works. So what else did I learn? Again, to, with respect to practicing Kata in the TPS environment, um, that simulator, the Lean Environment Simulator, and so well reflects the TPS environment that it really illustrated to me and almost everyone that I've seen uh, involved with it but they have a long way to go on their lean journey, right? Uh, very few people are, are to the level of where Toyota is. So it gives you a new appreciation of what a lean environment is. So uh, irrespective of kata, practicing kata, that helps you understand that, but people's knowledge threshold of lean is advanced. And that was my experience. And I've been practicing lean for about 20 years. Uh, Standard Works, a good example. As a certified TWI job instructor, uh, I understood standard work, uh, but I experienced a whole another level of appreciation for what is considered, I'll call it end on worthy violations of standard work, right? Things that would be considered minor in other environments, in this environment, stand out as obstacles uh, in kata terms. So I'll give you an example. When I was working the end, the disassembly end of the, uh, the simulator, um, I found I was putting an empty can bin, Kanban bin on the wrong level of the flow rack. So the temptation would normally be just grab that and put it on the correct level after I determined what I was wrong. Uh, but in this case, because of the, the standard work environment and the elevation of that importance, um, I reached over and pulled the end on court to let my team lead know that it was possible for me to make a mistake. And there might be an opportunity for Pokey Oak. And that was, a, that was an obstacle to me, uh, being able to meet my standard work and could impact uh, reaching the outcome metrics and our process metrics. So it really does take that kata practice to a whole nother level you know, when you're looking at it because of the environment. So here's a slide that has 
uh, some pictures on it. I'll give you just about 10 seconds to look at that and see if you can spot who might be violating standard work in this regard. So uh, you might look at it and say, well, some people are using the, the drill in their right hand, some people are using the drill in their left hand. I'd have to check the standard work, but I believe that it, that is okay that you can use either hand. Uh, but I, one thing that I know is not okay is pulling the uh, trigger on the drill with your index finger. Uh, that's called out in the uh, job instruction breakdown sheets. Uh, the standard work is to pull it uh, with your, um, your second finger down for better ergonomics. That's the job instruction reason for the key point of pulling it uh, with your second finger. And uh, this simulator, the simulator provides such a realistic environment and the standard work is so clear that these type of things can be used uh, in terms of kata practice as obstacles and, and uh, sometimes really get in your way of achieving uh, your target conditions and challenges as you're moving forward. Um, so uh, back here, the, the gentleman in the green shirt is the one who's violating the standard work, if that was not clear. So what did I learn with respect to um, practicing kata in a simulated work environment versus a, a real work environment or in a class work environment? So um, what I found was that the rapid experimentation that the simulated work environment allowed, it allowed rapid experimentation and coaching cycles. And that happened often many times faster than in the real world. And those coaching cycles and experiments also happen without day-to-day -day distractions. So I found that it allowed learners to focus a lot more. The intensity of the focus allowed a greater and faster learning. Um, and it really does happen faster than many people practice. I mean, a lot of times you're practicing uh, going through coaching cycles once a day, maybe you do one experiment a day, one every, every other day or so in most uh, organizations that are practicing kata um, in skill point, you get a lot of reps, a lot of practice, both the experimentation and the coaching cycles with feedback in a very short period of time. Um, so that stood out compared to the real world. Um, but what was interesting to me was that the simulated work environment was so real that it still offered the same uh, opportunities for say go see moments with respect to the current condition um, and uh, understanding obstacles. So um, there's a perfect illustration of being a coach being able to detect the knowledge threshold of a learner um, and then coaching to advance it. So uh, a learner was stating that there was no room at the end of the conveyor that, that the cab couldn't be moved in a particular condition. And so um, the coach was able to see, oh, okay, can, can we go see? And that field trip then revealed to the learner that there actually was room, they had a knowledge threshold that was preventing them from getting over an obstacle that they had. And the coach was able to use that real, realistic environment to demonstrate that, um, how you would coach to get through that. So the people that were involved in, in observing that coaching session, they really took a great example of how do I handle this when I go back to my factory? And, and they could take that realistic um, example back and say, oh, when I see this in my situation, I can try and handle it in this way. So it's a good example. And skill points designed to create those situations um, for clearly identifying if the learner can identify obstacles well, what, what are their capability for that, um, allows feedback on the coaching. So it's almost like the second coaching that you would see in Kata um, because of the way that it's set up with the coaching and then the 10-hour instructor providing additional feedback. Um, you know, so feedback on does the learner identify the obstacle, does the coach draw them out effectively, um, and you can take that home with you. So the skill acquisition rate seems to be faster 
in the simulated environment, yet the takeaways are um, very, very powerful and very, very good. So what did I learn with respect to what, how the role of the experience and how did that change the, the experience for me uh, when I was uh, working on the simulator um, and, and what I've seen it affect other people. And really what it comes down to is experience staff allows you to guide even when the situations get messy. Um, and so you can thereby model better behaviors or see better behaviors modeled. So you get, again, more takeaways of exactly how it should look. And um, questions could be answered with real life examples for better relatability and with a strong level of credit, credibility. So when somebody throws that up, yeah, but I don't think that'll work in mine. You know, Steve, for example, can say, well, at the Toyota plant that I worked at for 20 years, and, and you get that, that sense of, oh, okay, that, that's authority. I understand this. Um, or you know, people saying, I've, I've done this in three different plants, and I've seen it handled this way, or in some cases because of the, um, the connectedness with with Mike Rother be able to reference a conversation with Mike. Uh, so that experience really did enhance that uh, quite a bit. Um, and then kind of lastly here, what do they learn with respect to how the TWI 10 hour demonstrations that are in every 10 hour class, but specifically in the Kata classes, demonstrations of uh, the coaching Kata um, how did they leverage the Lean uh, Environment Simulator? And uh, you know, each 10 hour program requires these participant demonstrations. And since learning kata is based on practicing the improvement kata, experimenting, and that practice helps with a coach, then the synergy between the Lean environment simulator and the 10 hour format, the TWI format is very, very high because they just fit hand in glove together. And again, the results of the practice seem to be even better than what I see uh, when I'm coaching out in the real world. And I'm, I'm coaching three to five days a week, um, kind of on a regular basis. So, and because it's supplemented with the classroom content, I, I, it was interesting that I, I found that you would have an even better, faster understanding of both the improvement kata and the coaching kata within a very, very short period of time. If I am coaching somebody in the improvement kata, essentially all they're learning is the improvement kata. They don't understand the coaching kata until later on we introduce them and have them start doing the coaching kata. In skill point, you see both sides of it. You get an understanding of both sides of it. And uh, that happens very quickly. So the speed of learning is faster uh, with skill point than with real world coaching. Um, and just at the end here, I think we've got about a minute and a half. I'm gonna just see if I can uh, get a, a little video to show play here. This is video of the, um, video of actual skill point happening. See if we can get it to pop up here. Okay, I'll play. that um, that um, the the person experimenting encountered an unexpected obstacle I don't have a bin for this they're carrying parts around and the coach was amused because they know that was going to be a good coaching cycle we were going to have some learnings there were going to be some obstacles identified and I think that about wraps it up Wayne back to you 
Hey, Scott, thanks. Uh, thanks so much. This is obviously this is a little bit of a departure from a standard webinar in that we're talking about a learning system within a, uh, a workshop that we run. But uh, we really wanted to show the, the lean community what what is available. Uh, this is truly a unique environment that is available, as you said, is available to the public uh, in, in, uh, in a way that has not been made available before. So we wanted to make people available, uh, aware of that. Um, I have I been- wanted to, I wanted to share my understanding because it really truly is a unique thing that I see a lot of value in. Yeah. I, I'm a bit of a uh, uh, history geek when it comes to lean and some some of the history of of kind of where we where we are today. And I, I love the fact that as you're working on the simulator line, you're using the actual bins that have Numi stamped across it. Yeah, uh, you are you are living and breathing a Toyota production system uh, within the context of that that particular class. So. Even if you don't sign up for a skill point workshop, if you ever want to stop by, this is located just outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, if you ever want to stop by, we'd be happy to drive you up there and uh, show you this really cool piece of history for those of us in the, the lean community. So Scott, thanks again for, for showing us uh, this and sharing your experience with it. And with that, I think uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up and just thank everyone for participating in today's session. If you have any questions, feel free to send them along to me. Um, you also, looks like I shut off my camera there. Um, you also, if you have questions, you can email me at Dwayne, D-W-A-Y-N-E, at leanfrontiers.com. You can also go to leanfrontiers.com slash skill point and you'll find links to both the TWI uh, Skill Point Workshop and the Toyota Kata Skill Point Workshop. So, Scott, thanks again, and to Thank everyone, you. have a great day.